This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This video is all about the progression, the journey, the, the linking up information about atoms and elements all the way through to rocks, igneous rocks, and the rock cycle. So how we got to rocks um, is what we're going to discuss in this video. So in more detail, we're going to look at this as an objective. Uh, we're going to discuss the sequence of processes that takes atoms uh, and forms uh, different kinds of rocks. Okay, it forms different kinds of rocks. Then we're going to look at the found, why this is foundational knowledge, why this is so influential and invaluable for any kind of budding geologist or student uh, studying any kind of physical geography or geography or geology or earth science or any kind of geoscience, why this is foundational knowledge that they have to appreciate and understand uh, this journey. So we got some beautiful images here of some rocks and landscapes and some geomorphology. You got the beautiful um, west coast of England uh, coastline here, the west coast of Cornwall where I grew up. I got uh, Will Coates there, uh, right over here, and the beautiful Atlantic Ocean and a beach environment. You got the beautiful uh, Butte in uh, Monument Valley in Arizona, Utah border in the U.S. Beautiful landscape with the red sandstones and different kind of uh, sedimentary rock and the environments. And you got the beautiful Colorado River here in the Grand Canyon, again in the U.S. Just beautiful, um, you know, uh, water-created environment with uh, weather and erosion. So rocks are fantastic um, bits of information about our landscape, about our geology, our history, in terms of where the landscape came from and how it's changing through tectonics and the three types of rocks obviously play an important role in the formation of our landscape and our planet as a, as a whole. But this video is going to look at how we got to rocks and the three types and how we can discuss the rock cycle because we need to know how these rocks were formed and the step-by-step -step process of which the earth does this. So let's look at step one. Step one, looking at the atom, right? The, the structure and function of the atom, the nuclear force. And with the atoms, you can actually, you know, I, I do these like big flow charts. So this box here is going to have atoms in it, and we can actually annotate and label around the box as a good way to uh, have your notes uh, organized. So we can look at uh, the nucleus. All right, so nucleus has the proton and the neutron and then the electron on the outside. The proton is going to be uh, positively charged. The electron is our negative charge. And our neutron doesn't really have a charge. So I'm going to put no right there. So no charge right there. All right, so we have our basic structure. And when you combine... When you combine atoms, they form molecules. Now, how they bind or how they, how they combine really, or, or stick together is called uh, bonding. So the bonding happens many with the electrons. Okay. And they're going to bond in different ways, um, either sharing or um, exchanging of electrons different ways of bonding, okay, from ionic to covalent bonding, and that differs in terms of strength of the structure of the atom and molecules that combine. But we had the basis of basically matter, and uh, atoms basically are the building blocks for pretty much everything in geology. Building blocks in geology. There we are. So how do atoms and elements really um, relate to each other? How, how was their relationship? Well, the atom, right? So we take one atom, all right? So we take the atom, we've got the proton there, and the electron, there we go. And this is basically hydrogen, so one, right? So the, um, the basis for elements is how the atoms are arranged, uh, based on the size of the atom, okay, the amount of protons, which relate to the amount of electrons, 
And you can figure out the neutrons by subtracting the protons and electrons, get the difference, and you get the neutrons. Okay, so hydrogen being a gas and the most simplest element on the periodic table that's naturally occurring, it's one. So it's one proton. Now, I always think of it as a nice Lego brick. You know, a nice Lego brick. So one Lego brick would be hydrogen. When you add a second Lego brick onto your structure and you have two, you have two Lego bricks and you have two, pro two protons. So you're increasing the size of the nucleus, you're increasing the amount of electrons. You have helium, which is HE, chemical symbol, HE. So it has two right there. So when you keep adding protons onto your, your thing, you're actually going to change the name of the element. So carbon is six, six protons, oxygen is eight, up to uranium, which is 92. So in uranium, we have 92 Lego bricks, so to speak, or protons. And it's a very large, very large um, uh, atom, very large uh, element with a lot of uh, protons. And the larger the atom, the more protons, the more chance uh, there is of this element breaking down and losing some of those protons uh, or neutrons in the nucleus. And this is called uh, atomic decay or radioactive decay, how they break apart and break down. So we utilize this natural breaking of the, the protons and neutrons from the nucleus and the, the loss of, of mass uh, to harness energy, so, so nuclear energy in terms of nuclear power generation or even nuclear bombs. So we harness the atomic power, atomic force that's uh, derived inside every atom. And the larger they are, the more chance it has to break down. So the elements, again, we have um, you know, 92 naturally occurring elements and only about eight are really uh, a large percentage of what we use or how what the earth uses to form different rocks and different processes so only eight out of 92 are really going to be important for geology so now we're on to step three step three uh, is minerals how minerals are formed so minerals are solid they are inorganic they are naturally occurring but na nature. They have a certain chemistry and chemical composition, and they have a certain structure, physical structure or crystalline structure. So these are the five things that require a mineral to be a mineral. Now, minerals are basically uh, single or combinations of elements. And the single ones are called native minerals, like gold, and the other ones are broken down into either silicate minerals or non-silicate minerals. So these two are the main differences, really. And then there are other groups in the non-silicates that are further classification, like carbonates, oxides, halides, sulfates, that kind of stuff. So these minerals are basically made of elements, either single or combination. Now, elements can mix together to form compounds which then can also form different kinds of minerals. And the mineral is obviously solid, inorganic, naturally occurring, and has both chemical structure, chemical uh, makeup, and a structure that is definitive to that mineral. So right now, so you've got 5,000 uh, known minerals. And obviously, they're solid. And they're found within the crust and upper mantle, mostly. Some have deeper down, but there's a lot in the crust of the mantle. So when you bring the minerals down to a certain depth underground, in the crust, in the lithosphere, and down into the asthenosphere, which really kind of takes place, and even below, into the uh, the mesosphere, which is the mantle, lower mantle. So the asthenosphere really is the main area, 
based on the depth, all right, and the temperature. So the temperature has to be above around 1400 degrees centigrade, okay, or over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit to really melt, start to melt any rock. So most rocks will melt at around 1400 degrees Celsius. That melting will create liquid material that is formed from the rock melting. So anything that's in the rock or the mineral will start to melt and form what we call melt. And that is the solid component. And you've got also some gases in the magma. So this is magma. And you have a certain composition. So once you raise the temperature at a certain depth inside the Earth's interior, you're going to melt the minerals and melt whatever rock is around there to create what we call melt, all right, which includes some gases and some dissolved ions. And you have set a new, obviously, phase change. So this is, this is causing a phase change. So now we've got magma and lava. So we just like separate this here. So lava, that is our extrusive, okay, igneous rock. So when it basically cools down, it's going to form extrusive igneous rock. And when the magma cools down, it's going to form intrusive uh, igneous rock. Now, lava is going to be on the surface on the crust and magma is going to be inside at certain depths of the Earth's interior. So we have a clear difference in environment of where these two are created. They're pretty much the same composition chemically. Lava may have some more dissolved gases as of the location, oh. but generally they're kind of the same uh, material and this is containing so it's containing all of the liquid uh, minerals and this is where we can bring in the Bowen's reaction series and discuss how certain minerals would crystallize and form their uh, solid structure at certain temperatures. So you got olivine being the first at 1400 degrees Celsius to kind of like form and crystallize and, and become part of the uh, that liquid melt, that solid chunks of olivine. And you've got quartz, which is the last one to really form at a much colder 650 degrees Celsius. So that difference in range of temperature and the different uh, two, two branches of the uh, series, either it's continuous or discontinuous, shows that we can see how the minerals form at certain temperatures and then they form, um, you know, they are going to combine to form our rock. So now we have our step four, right? Our magma and lava, and we're going to consolidate. So the igneous rock has gone through different processes of consolidation, all right, crystallization, and cooling. So the three C's. And it's gone from that that liquid form of magma and lava based on the environment. So we can do environment. We can also do speed of cooling, which would affect the size and uh, organization of the minerals as they crystallize. And you're going to form the different types of igneous rock, extrusive versus intrusive, and based on texture and and uh, grain size and crystal size, you get different types of igneous rock. But we've gone from atoms all the way through to igneous rock. So there you have it. Atoms go to elements. Elements construct to form minerals. Minerals can melt at certain temperatures, creating a melt 
material, uh, which is called uh, magma and lava, and then magma and lava can consolidate, crystallize, and cool to form different types of igneous rock. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.